So um, by way of getting started, actually, we don't seem to have an agenda on the, the page yet for today. Let me go ahead and stick the page in the chat and we can start getting things moving. I don't seem to have access to the chat. Does anyone have access to the chat here to stick the link to the meeting minutes? Hello? Can anyone hear me? Yeah, Sorry. I, can, I can hear you. I, I was on mute. Sorry. Uh, Lucina posted. OK, thank you. And if folks could start putting themselves on the attendee list. And then Frederick, <laughs> looks like we're doing agenda on the fly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, usually I spend the half hour before uh, grooming. Um, <laughs> and I, I have a good story about a uh, helping a colleague, a former colleague of mine get a demo done and up at 2 a.m. in the morning last night. So I have an excuse, but it's not a good one. <laughs> I'd say that's a very good excuse, actually. So, well, Okay, well, let's add in some stuff then. The easiest way is to copy what we had from last week and start from there. That's uh, cheating, isn't it? <laughs> Plagiarism from last week's. We're, we're, yeah, open, I... we're open source. As long as you follow the license from last week, it's all cool. Yeah, that's true. This is open source. Plagiarism is encouraged. They... Okay, let's get rid of all these action items. The good news is we should still start on time. On time being five minutes after the meeting time? Yeah, just give always give people time to come in. OK. If, if someone can um, copy over, I think there's some action items on the bottom. Uh, there are none. OK. Our mistake then. Um, so the action items were listed. Um, and I removed the AR tag because we'll be adding on ARs. Okay, I think that's enough to get started. So uh, please add yourself to the list if you have not done so already. If you are unable to add yourself to the list, to the attendees list, then uh, speak up and we will add you. Yeah. Also, though, like the, uh, the attendees list, because of how new this project is, is uh, really helpful in uh, convincing others to come join us and help as well. So, uh, like, definitely, definitely add yourself in. Yeah, hey, Morton, have you moved to a new company? Uh, no. All right, because this is you as ACM. And uh, oh, before um, I had you as at and Yeah, it's a ACM are, are the three initials I've been using for a login since 1984. Ah, I see. Okay, great. Um, before we get started then, uh, more bit agenda bashing. Are there any topics that anyone would like to discuss that are not on the board? Okay, let's go and get started. So 
we have in the events, we have KubeCon Seattle coming up from December 10th through 13th. Inside of that, we have an intro to network service mesh talk and a deep dive talk. And we are in the process of making a demo, of which we will talk more about soon. We are also looking for people to contribute through the form of a podcast, blog, or FIDO. Uh, we also have a FIDO mini summit uh, call for paper that was uh, that was added, uh, pending acceptance until uh, Tom tells us otherwise. So, um, also I, I, f I forgot to mention um, there was a. I guess as a small announcement, there was a video that was put out about network service mesh. And so if someone could uh, link to that, that was put out by uh, um, the Volk group. So it's a three minute blurb and um, it's, uh, it's worth having a watch. So let's, let's head over to the uh, to the agenda board. Okay, so in progress we have the VPP data plane with the VXLAN mechanism. Um, Ed, your name's on the list. Uh, yeah, that's because I filed the issue. <laughs> um, <that's laughs> because it's been picked up yet. I, I, I wanted to go through and try and provide a good to work from for doing the VXLAN mechanism for the VPP data plane. So I, 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 you know, I went so far as to sort of go through and say, okay, um, <clears throat> you know, you know, to, to ro roll everything out starting from, okay, what the hell is VXLAN? And then rolling through your know, various pointers to, okay, well, how do I do this in VPP? Okay, how do I do it at the CLI so you can poke at it? How do I do it with the API? Um, you know, what is it that we're actually doing? That kind of stuff. So it, it hopefully has the sort of soup to nuts of everything you need to pick up and work on that task. If, if somebody's interested in working on that, it's actually a, a pretty good task. So I, I, I've realized that actually explaining things is probably the most productive use of my time sometimes. Let's see, is, uh, is Tom on the meeting? Because I think he'd be interested in this. Yes, I am on the meeting, Fred. Cool. Um, yeah, so I, so I know you have a lot of experience in this space as well. So uh, I don't want to, I don't want to add work to you if, uh, if you're already, uh, if you're already pegged, but would this be something that you want, that you would like to help on? Yeah, I would. Um, I I got my um, 185, uh, which I haven't made enough progress on to consider it done yet. Um, but uh, uh, so uh, that has I, uh, that has to come uh, come first. Hey, by the way, a little mechanics question on that 185. I can't if you don't own the issue, or for some reason I can't status it i can't change or add stuff to it because the issue was originally written by fred krauts uh, uh fred Kautz, and i'm not quite sure why that is fred i was thinking of that exact same issue because i cannot uh i cannot actually give you uh, uh the issue unless you're part of the group um ed uh, I, I proposed i figured out the magic trick for this by the way um, okay and this is what i would suggest we do in that case which is um, in the, this is interesting. You can basically add a person as a read collaborator to the project, and it doesn't give them any uh, any additional privileges, um, but it does suddenly make them someone you can assign things to and, and that kind of stuff. It's a weird little permission. I was going to suggest that exact same thing. So uh, let's let's do it. And as an action item, anyone who wants to have their GitHub uh, account added and the ability to take to be given ownership of, uh, of items, uh, put your GitHub ID uh, down on this document, and I will go through after the meeting and add everyone who does so. Put it down. Okay, I got it. Or, or you could actually, we make an issue. You just respond to the issue. That might be easier. 
Yeah, let's do that. So let me create an issue real quick. Or if someone wants to create an issue saying um, uh, like tracker for uh, for adding users. Well, I'll, I'll create the issue since I brought it up. Let me just Great, see if thanks. I can do that now. Cool. Thank you. Like I have to do something yeah, once, to do today. And once you get the issue down, put it in the uh, gen in the meeting notes. And anyone who wants to have that same mechanism that we're using with Tom, respond to that GitHub. What's the mechanism called? <laughs> I don't know what I'm asking for. Git, GitHub issue request um, access. Reading. Or request OK, good, good, good. Request. Got it. Yeah. Cool. OK, so MemIF mechanism is the same, except with MemIF instead of VXLAN. Do we want to say anything about that, or should we just well, I, continue on? I think Ilya is currently working on that one. Um, do you have anything you want to say at this time, Ilya? Uh, if not, that's cool, too. But um, that would be the time to speak up <laughs> if you want to. OK, I take that as a no, then. Cool. And this is the same idea. I sort of laid out all the nitty gritty detail. Um, in general, these are probably good issues for people to read if they're interested in, in doing things with the VPP data plane in general. So. Cool. So converting uh, generate SROV config map to a plugin that is a work in progress that was shelved in the in light of uh, more high priority things, I will definitely come back to this and make it happen. Um, well, if I could make a suggestion, I did create a deferred column if there are things that we're going to get back to at some point, but we don't want to be reviewing them every week. Oh, that's a great idea. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so you can just drag it over to the deferred column if, in fact, it's something that you know is currently not, just literally drag it over. Um, so if it's literally something that is not you know, it's still important. We still intend to get to it, but it's just not going to be, it's not active right now. It's not in the, the critical path. OK. X Factor CNFs. Uh, so I am I continue to shop this uh, this around to different groups and different people so we can get some more some more people looking at it. Uh, I'm going I am in the process of uh, thinking through some of the uh, some of the things on the first the first 12 because I the first 12 need to be rewritten uh, to be more cloud uh, cloud native network specific because there are many of them are talking about 12 factor apps uh, microservices and uh, they have a very heavy Ruby and Python slant, but uh, we need to change those so that they're using technologies that uh, people in this space are more familiar with. And Ruby on Rails is not one of those. Um, migrating errors to Go errors. So this continues to be an ongoing process. Whenever you see an error that is being emitted that has not been generated by Go errors, uh, please take the time to migrate it over. Um, L2 forwarding with VPP, with a VPP example. So uh, we already have an example on this, so I think we can close this one then. Um, okay, NSM enhancement proposals uh, support with the CNCF CNF project, so that continues to be a ongoing thing that we are that we are doing. So this is um, this a large part of this is being discussed through the through the demo. So we'll defer this. Um, a task to add sidecar to containers is Pratik on by any chance? Uh, let's go ahead and move this one to deferred because it's been a little while since Pratik has been on. So when Pratik comes back, we'll uh, we will ping him on it. Okay, and in review, uh, we have. I, I've been stacking up a large stack of of, of PRs. It keeps getting larger. Yes, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start hitting this this particular thing in um, 
this particular list much more much more often. So, anyways, enter uh, enter NSM API. So let's let's start with there. Um, I don't think that I don't think our NSM API is quite to the point where it needs to be merged, but I do know that it's been a really good point of discussion because it sort of lays out the the API that network service managers used to talk to each other. Um, and so there, there's been a lot of just a back and forth and discussion on, okay, what should this look like and that kind of thing. And so more voices here would definitely be helpful. Cool. So, so do we want to talk more about that uh, or do you, do you want to, is, is, do we have a further agenda item further down or do you want to just leave it and yeah, encourage people to look at it? Let, let's leave it for the moment and encourage folks to look at it. I think I walked through it last meeting and so um, you know, if, if you know, folks can take a look at it, if at some future meeting folks would like a deep dive again, we can do that. But I, I, I feel like I'm good for the moment. Okay, remove requirement for huge pages for VPP container. Yeah, um, it turns out, so VPP only needs huge pages um, if you are dealing with hardware, right? So if you're using DPDK. And at the stage that we're at right now in development is we're doing sort of you know, various local cross connects, we aren't actually plugging into hardware quite yet in general. And so, but huge pages means that you have to do all kinds of weird things to get the underlying server right. Um, and so for the moment, I, I sort of took the huge pages requirement away by disabling the DPDK plugin. Um, we're not using it. And this means that we can run the new VPP data plane, um, you know, pretty much everywhere. I, I, I've got a patch further down that runs it in Vagrant. Um, I'm working on a patch that, as soon as I sort of iron it out, will hopefully get um, get it running in the integration test in both Circle CI and in uh, Travis CI. So it, 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 it makes the world easier in the short term. Um, eventually, when people get serious about deploying these things for performance, they're going to need to turn on huge pages because it does make the world go faster. Um, but that doesn't impact the actual code being developed. It just means that you know you got to make sure your server has huge pages, and you add a, a couple lines to the YAML file. So Ed, when um, MIF are packing, passing back and forth, they don't use any huge page backing. Uh, so VPP is super super adaptable. So if huge pages are available, it will use them. Okay. It so it would make it faster, but the fact you don't necessarily need them to make it work. Yeah, basically, the, the only places that VPP needs huge pages, uh, you know, putting aside that you can make some things faster with them, is situations where huge pages are legitimately required. For example, DPDK insists upon them. Um, and in those cases, you've got to have them because otherwise DPDK crashes. With a very, very descriptive error message, by the way, so you know exactly what went wrong. If you get a crash, crash clear. Yeah, so I so I believe this is primarily for well from the CI side it simplifies that and simultaneously um, it, it it may end up simplifying some of the is this going to be useful in the demo or is this only useful for our CI environment at this point? Well, it's useful for CI and it's also useful for, useful for development because you don't have to go burn you're running extra large uh, if you're running for example VMs on your laptop for your Kubernetes cluster for development you don't have to go running extra large VMs in order to do that because you've dedicated gigabytes and gigabytes to huge pages. Okay, nice. So, and that, that's actually where I sort of ran across it was in relation to this one, adding a vagrant directory uh, to make it easy to bring up a Kubernetes that you could go and do this stuff on. Right, and um, so will, um, is, is that ready to be reviewed? Uh, it will be, uh, you, you, I believe you merged the, the other patch and so I've got to go rebase it because I've gotten myself out on a, out on a limb, but I'll go ahead okay. and, do the and, and you know, we'll sort of move in that direction. Um, the next one up is going to turn on deploying the data, the VPP data plane as part of our CI um, so that we know that it comes up and deploys cleanly. Okay, nice. Um, Okay, I will just cover the cover the last two in the review. Um, add script vagrant to ease running local Kubernetes suitable for network service mesh. Um, and so that that looks like it's to make it easier for for developers. 
Yep. Yeah, I, that, that's exactly it is, um, you know, it, it makes it super, super easy if you're doing development. Um, you know, and it includes little niceties like, you know, a, a make Docker save that will save the images into a place where they, the Vagrant will import them or where you can import them from a running Vagrant um, simply so that you can sort of iterate quickly. And I, there's also a readme that, that sort of talks you through all the, the sort of incantations for use. Great. So in the near future, expect to have a very easy way to um, spin it up on your own system. And uh, finally, there's a add a build of data plane VPP to circle CI. So just to be clear, this looks like it's the actual VPP data plane uh, that you're that you're building. Yep, and, and the reason that the CI is failing is I got to go rebase it on top of the others because there was a bug I fixed in one of those other patches that it's now getting. So this this is clearly not ready for merge yet. But as soon as I get the the rebases done on top of other things and they make their way into master, we should be this this should work because it's, it's it's having issues for very well understood reasons. And, and that okay, way, cool. you also know if you're working, for example, on things in the data plane you can know immediately if you've broken the data plane when you push your patch, which hopefully, I know that makes me sleep better at night. And it also means as a reviewer, you can also know that, you know, at least it deploys um, successfully. Okay, cool. So we're gonna know, uh, is there, uh, I know we're gonna need a lot of time to discuss the main uh, main agenda items, so we'll head back to the main to the main agenda, and we will jump straight into the uh, KubeCon demo for Network Service Mesh. So there was someone who added a bunch of uh, a bunch of slides to uh, to the uh, document. So thank you very much. That was very helpful. Um, Ed, uh, you have the floor. Yeah, so um, I think we talked about in the last uh, meeting, sort of the first four slides with the basics of the demo stuff. Um, and then starting about slide five, um, you know, these are the slides that were added by the helpful community member I need to go track down. Should have say, okay, well, we should, we should list out objectives here. And then they had another slide where they dug into um, <clears throat> sort of high level user story. Um, you know, it had some very productive things there. And then the, the following slide, they sort of got into questions about, okay, what if we were gonna draw pictures of the architecture? So they drew a picture of sort of where CNI stands today. <clears throat> and then, you know, they drew another picture in the next slide of what CNI looks like with network, what the system looks like with network service mesh running. And then they had some thoughts on the user interface in slide nine. Um, in particular, I'm very interested in the, the skydive option. Uh, because they already does a ton of good topology visualization. Um, we would just need to get someone who would be interested in going and writing a skydive probe. Um, so that's another interesting thing if folks are looking to pick something up. Um, and part of writing that would also be working together to help figure out what makes sense as APIs out of network service mesh for communicating topology information to subsystems. Um, cool. And then slide 10. This was getting into logistics, sort of like various booths, et cetera. Now, in terms of the demo backend location, um, how would feel, folks feel about simply running the demo on packet.net? I personally like the idea. Uh, if anyone's trying to talk, you're probably on mute. Yeah, I think uh, we're running all our sure. CI there. Oh, sorry, go on. Um, was there a specific item on the packet.net side? I might have missed. I can give an update on what we're doing. Um, oh, so we were just... Yeah, so this, this was talking about the network service mesh demo. Um, so the point of confusion for folks yeah. familiar. There are actually two demos. We're collaborating closely. One is the VNF CNF demo that Taylor and his group are doing, and we're trying to get some stuff delivered in support of that. And then the other is the network service mesh demo. And this was just sort of saying, okay, for the network service mesh demo, 
uh, how about we just run that on packet.net since we actually have access to resources there. And we have lots of friends like you, Taylor, and, and the rest of the Volk folks who have a ton of experience there. We're actually, we're, we're using the cross-cloud CI guys that, that Taylor and company built for CNCF. That's literally how we stand up our Kubernetes clusters. Yeah, um, I think trying to use the same server, so as long as they're meeting those requirements, sounds good. Um, and we already have several projects that we could invite whoever, uh, so packet.net projects specifically, under the CNCF org, we could invite people into those and then you'd be able to do deployments. This is on the CNCF lab. Um, so if you go to CNCFIO under their community, it's the packet.net lab, and we're using access to that. So we already have something set up for deploying the servers for CNF testing, and I, I'd be happy to work with y'all to get access to that area or whatever we want. I know you're already using cross-cloud, so if um, we can definitely coordinate on that. Thank you. So um, if other folks have things they want to add to the demo or they want to sort of help articulate, that's awesome. Reach out. I'm happy to add people to the edit permissions for the deck. Um, do folks have other things they want to say on the demo? Uh, yes. Um, so Lucina, if you could go to skydive.network, uh, it's a domain name. And uh, this is something that would be really good to, if someone wants to take a look at this and see if it would be suitable for visualizing what's going on in the network. So this is a real-time network analyzer. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will see a graphic of what it does. And so it's, it's specifically designed to visualize networks on the fly. And so uh, if we can generate uh, metrics in network service mesh and drop them in a way that Skydive can consume, we can create very compelling visualizations. Yep. And so if anyone, sorry, go on, Ed. I was gonna say that this would make a nice project for somebody who wanted to sort of pick up and run with it, um, you know, as well. So it, it's, it's a good project in the community. Yeah, and this this will absolutely help us uh, push it forward as well. So it makes it very easy for people to understand, and this is very important from a uh, uh, like not necessarily using skydive, uh, which may or may not be useful for, for for people in production. I know that the team is aiming. If they haven't gotten there already, I know that team is aiming to become production quality. Uh, but uh, it's certainly like being able to even generate these metrics is a, is a absolute requirement for us in a production in a production environment. So Oh. Cool. Is there anything else we want to talk on the demo or should we move on? Okay, so inter NSM API. Uh, do do you want to talk about that, or do you want to uh, do you want to remove that from the agenda, Ed? Yeah, let's remove that from the agenda. Um, more commentary there is very very much appreciated, but we went over it last week. Okay, so X Factor CN updates. Um, so I think it was a. Uh, Correct me if I get the name wrong. Uh, Chris Metz is offered to help with um, the um, with the overall design of the of the page itself, and he's going to have something of on this uh, weekend, a new design for for the website. So uh, definitely looking forward to see to see what that looks like, and I will continue putting content down and I invite anyone else who wishes to help refine that document or add more or discuss what is right or wrong or anything like that or how you know to to join in okay, so there should be a very low entry to 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 barrier to, to to join in if this is something you want to help with um, 
in the long run, something, one of the things that I am definitely going to ask for help from on, from this community is once we get something that's a bit more settled, it's going to be help with um, shopping it around and getting people to, getting more people to look at it. So expect that as a future thing. Um, I don't think Sergey's going to move on to the next item. I don't think Sergey's on the call today. So uh, I believe you had a, another work thing that uh, preempted him. Uh, Ed, do you have any comments about the data plane work that he's doing? Uh, so I, I, I know the data plane, the initial data, BPP data plane stuff has been merged. And I think uh, Ilya is working on the MemIF enhancements for that. I had a bunch of patches that we talked about earlier that are basically through and um, you know, trying to move that more to the mainstream of RCI. Um, and I think there's some work on going on trying to integrate that with the network service manager as well. Uh, do any of the other folks who are working on some of those pieces want to comment on them at this point or ask questions or, you know, anything like that? Uh, I send you a question in the uh, IRC chat so you can check it. Okay, I will. Wait. Did you say there was a question in the chat? IRC. Okay. I was saying I didn't see anything in the chat. Uh, yeah. Is that something that we that we want to to talk about, or we're we just leaving that in, in IRC? Uh, probably better to go back and forth in IRC, and Lucilia wants to talk about that here. I'm fine either way, but probably back and forth is going to be easier. Okay, it's up. To, it's up to you. Uh, not you. Uh, Ed, uh, it's up to Ilya. <laughs> Okay, so in that scenario, uh, packet.net CI, we have had a lot of uh, movement in this space. So um, Andre, you have the floor. Yes, add my many improvements past week for packet CI stability. So, I mean, overall, it's working quite well. Um, the the only thing I think is there's a known core OS issue that hopefully should be fixed in packet shortly. They've been wonderful about that. Um, so I, I think we're we're on the road towards being able to make a switch off. We're just not quite there yet. Okay. Nice. Um. Okay, so KubeCon demo for VNF CNF comparison. There's three people on the list, so I'll let you decide as to who you want to have speak. I think I may be the only person on the call out of that list, <laughs> so I'll speak up. Um, let's see. So. We got several different parts uh, happening. Um, Michael is actually, uh, he had to step away. He's not available until November. And Bacek's bringing on someone else um, that he works with on the performance side. So to keep moving that forward, what we're trying to do is validate that all of our tests work on both packet.net and the FDIO CSIT lab and then um, comparing results and making sure the systems are tuned. So that person is started onboarding and working today. We'll probably have, um, well, we should have more updates on that next week as far as performance. Then we're also working on the OpenStack deployment side uh, to do comparisons for the VNF side of things and that's um, been the design for what we want on the cluster has been done and we're working with the OpenStack expert actually later today so that they can start implementing the different parts that we need um, for the 
comparison. And then we've been focused on the automation portions of the project. So we have um, one of those parts will be, I think something useful for the NSM project is turning on the huge page stuff, um, doing configuration for layer two on uh, packet.net, which includes both host configuration as well as talking to the packet.net uh, API and configuring layer two. It's not available in any of the libraries or packet.net um, CLIs, so we actually have to talk directly to the API, which is fine, but that's what we're working on on that side, and that'll, I think, be useful um, dealing with stuff like kernel um, changes, um, the huge pages, again, is one, and there's a lot of other things that we're enabling, and then um, rebooting the systems and making sure everything comes up right. So as those get completed, um, we'll make sure that you all see them and they can be rolled into the CI for NSM project. And we'll be working on tying that stuff together into the Kubernetes deployment this week. So hoping that we can have layer two connections between containers um, so maybe end of week or early next week with all of the automated. And then we can show y'all here's how we did that, which looks like volume mounts right now to for the MIF interfaces. And then hopefully that information could be used when we tie in NSM in to do a lot of that same work. So try and keep it real minimal and document all of that. That's where we are right now. Cool. And um, is there anything that you are blocked upon that this community that this community can help you with? Mm, I think the only issues are around maybe some performance numbers that Ed is aware of with regards to what we're seeing on packet.net versus FDIO. So right now we're tuning. So I don't think blockers, we'll see how it goes with the new person that came on. Um, we basically got stopped in the middle of this tuning to validate that. So I don't, I don't think anything today. Okay, great. Um, so Ed, this may have been a hangover from the last, uh, from the math last meeting, there was a review data plane API documentation do we want to do anything with uh, with that today? I think that's a holdover from last week. I, I think we took a quick look at it last week. Um, those docs continue to sort of evolve forward, um, but you know we're we're still not totally converged. We talked through some of the pieces that had converged last week, so you can take that off the agenda for the moment. Cool. And let's uh, let's de delete the one from. Romkey, but add an action item to, that describes that we are not affected by Kubernetes network policy. Okay. So effectively, I think what Romkey was coming up to, uh, talking about the, uh, the next gen item, is that uh, there, I think there was a misunderstanding in terms of network service mesh and, and uh, in its use of uh, networking in Kubernetes, and that be, uh, like the network service mesh is orthogonal in terms of its networking. And so if you put a policy on that, uh, there is a, there is a uh, hole that we'll eventually have to fill in terms of what this policy look like. And that can be, we have, to, we can address major portions of that through, uh, through our custom uh, resource definitions and, uh, discoverability and the network service endpoint itself as well. Uh, but there's also, there may be other policies that we may need to to address within network service mesh once uh, once we get the basics down. Uh, but one of those things is the Kubernetes networking uh, policy, which is the ingress and egress policies don't really fit well uh, or don't appear to fit well within the network service mesh uh, model and we don't and we likely don't want to depend on them 
So, because they're they're very Kubernetes oriented in, in a way. That, so, is uh is do you think there's a that's a good way of describing it, Ed, or do you have a more clear way of describing that? I think that's probably a good way of describing it, basically, which is you know. From, from network service mesh's point of view, Kubernetes networking is itself a network service. And if it has ACLs it wants to apply through Kubernetes network policies, that is awesome. But that's its problem to enforce, not ours. Yeah. And so I can see potential integration points, but it's not, they're not like strong requirements. Uh, so, uh, so I think we should put together a small document or blurb that we can forward people to when they ask this question, because this question that Ramki brought up is going to be brought up again. Like you're going to see this question multiple times. And so we want to have a, a clearer idea of this. And when people ask us and we point it to it and they have misconceptions that arise from that, we'll evolve that document. So. Okay. Um, one last item that I did not add in, uh, but I'll, talk about it. Uh, I have been working on a network service endpoint uh, to, re to uh, redefine and tighten up the APIs. So no major changes from what, you, you, from what we've discussed, but what we've discussed, uh, where, the AP, where the endpoints are, uh, need to be updated to the, to the ideas that, we've, uh, that we currently have. So I'm currently working on that. I have a large block of time today that I've allocated towards this and I'm going to focus on it. And so next week you should all have a network service endpoint, a set of APIs that, uh, that are more refined and we can take a look at it and review and so on. Um, and with that, is there anything that anyone else would like to discuss or, uh, or, we can finish early. Uh, Great. Yeah. And, uh, 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 sorry, but the issue 185 was just closed. Um, I wasn't sure that was so. Oh, I apologize. Let me, let's, let's go. I, I recall the context on that. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll reopen it and uh, we'll continue to track that because that was, uh, that was related to tracking the stuff that you and I were talking about. And um, I mistook it for, for something else that would, that had already been resolved. Um, no problem. And so once we get your name added, then we will assign this to you and then that won't be an issue. Yeah, that uh, was a little awkward. Yeah, sorry about that. No, um, no, no problem, no problem, MP. Okay, is there anything else that anyone wants to, uh, to discuss? Okay, great, and finally, make sure you add yourself to the GitHub issue, it's already been created if you want to have issues assigned to you. Uh, and we will start adding names. And with that, uh, thank you everyone for your time and we will see you again, same time next week. All right, goodbye everybody. Take care.